Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my video channel. Thanks so much for joining me for another video. And what we're going to be covering in this particular video is how you can import and export CSV or comma separated value data from a PowerShell automation script. Now, I've already got PowerShell installed in front of me here. If I just do PS version table, you can see I'm running the latest version of PowerShell Core Edition here on the Windows operating system. I'm also using the Windows terminal here, and we're just going to be taking a look at a couple of different commands. Keep in mind that you can install PowerShell on Linux and Mac OS as well natively, and you can also run PowerShell inside of a Docker container. So it's really easy to get PowerShell spun up, even if you don't want to install it necessarily on your system uh, using containers, right? So we're going to be looking at the export CSV command here along with its sister command command, which is known as import CSV. And these are really nice functions because these are actually built directly into PowerShell. These are not third party modules that you have to install after the fact. So as long as you've got PowerShell running, you should automatically have access to these particular commands. And they're really essential to working with any kind of CSV data. Now, how do we actually get some CSV data? Well, I went out on the internet and did a quick search and found some publicly accessible data on data.gov over here. This is actually a really interesting data set right here that I found that's been pretty recently updated. And what it contains is electric vehicle population data from the Washington State Department of Licensing. So this wouldn't be national data across the entire United States. This would be only scoped to Washington State uh, because I guess they have some kind of law that allows them to distribute just the Department of Licensing data for battery operated vehicles or plug in hybrids. So this is a really interesting data set. You can download it using a different series of formats right here. But one of the formats that it's provided in is comma separated values. So of course, since we're learning about CSV, that's the format that will download it in. So feel free to grab that same data set and play around with it. One of the things that's nice about it is that it actually has a pretty substantial amount of data and it's logically organized into a bunch of different fields that are pretty easily recognizable. So for example, right here, we've got things like which county in Washington state the vehicle is registered in. It even gives us the VIN number, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've also got the city that it was registered in, the state that it was regist registered in. Um, so obviously that's always going to be Washington in this case. We also have the postal code. We have the year, the manufacturing year, the model or uh, manufacturer make model. And we also have Let's see, electric vehicle type. So that tells us if it's just battery only or if it is a plug-in hybrid. Here we've got a clean alternative fuel vehicle eligibility. I'm not really sure what that means, but I don't necessarily care about that particular field. We've also got electric range. So this is actually really interesting because we can actually see, you know, how many different vehicles have different ranges based on that field. We also have a field here that looks like it may not be filled out or at least not comprehensively called base MSRP manufacturers suggested retail price. And if I just kind of look through here, I don't see a lot of values filled in. So I think that field would have pretty limited usefulness. And there's a few other fields here as well. But I think the main ones that I'm probably interested in are things like what county is it in? What's the VIN number so I can get more information about the vehicle? What city is it in? Uh, so we can kind of look at, you know, what cities are the most popular for electric vehicles. And we could also see like what the make model year and um, manufacture of the vehicle is. So let's go ahead and get this data into our PowerShell script. So this file is about I think it's about 35, 32 megabytes in size, something like that, depending on if you divide by 1,000 or 1024. Um, so what we're going to do for starters is just call import CSV. And we have the option to specify a delimiter here. So when we open up that file in Excel, we can just see all the different fields because Excel kind of automatically parses the file. But if we open it up in Notepad, you can see that a comma is actually the delimiter. But in some files, even if they're called CSVs, you might actually notice that they use maybe a semicolon as a delimiter or a pipe character as a delimiter. And so in those cases, you can actually specify an alternative delimiter character 
register right here in the import CSV command. But we're going to ignore that since it automatically uses a comma, but then we're going to specify the path. So I'll just go into my current directory right here, say I want the electric vehicle population data file, and then let's see what other parameters there are. We do have the ability to specify headers if we want to here as well. Not all CSV files necessarily have the first row as being a header row. So in that case, you can actually specify which headers you want to use right there. And that's pretty much all we really care about. But what we're going to do is basically just say import CSV, specify the path, and then just create a variable to hold that data. And in this case, we'll just call it data, but you can use whatever variable name that you want to. So as you can see, even though it's a pretty large file, it was actually pretty fast to import that. So now if we just do data.count, we can see that there are close to 139,000 records inside of this electric vehicle CSV file, right? So a lot of interesting data here to kind of parse and grep through, right? So what I'm going to do for starters is just inspect the first couple of records. So we'll index into the objects here and maybe just take a look at the first 10 records here. And as you can see, it's going to be shown in list form here by default. So we're going to see the property names on the left or field names. And then on the right hand side, we'll see the actual values for each of those fields. But we could actually just kind of filter down this data to things that we're interested in. So if I wanted to, I could say take these first 10 records and pipe them into format table dash auto size and then specify the properties that we want. So for now, I'll just grab, let's say, county, city, state, and make. So county, city, and make. I'm actually going to ignore state because it's always going to be Washington anyway. So as you can see in the first few records here, we can just kind of sample that data. We have a few different counties listed here. We have a few different cities, a few different makes, and a few different models. Somebody's got the Jaguar in there, so they must be doing pretty well financially. All right, so now that we've kind of sampled the data here, we can kind of see what we're interested in. Let's go ahead and explore some more records. So we can simply change the index here and say, I want the next 10 records. So we'll just say 10 to 19, for example. And so now we get kind of a different sampling of that data. We could also go, you know, kind of towards the end of it and say, I want records 138,000 to 138,009. And that'll give us another 10 records. So that allows us to kind of sort through the different records in this CSV file and find what we're looking for. So a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. You can use PowerShell commands like uh, select object to grab certain properties as well. You can use commands like group object to group the data based on things like county or city and kind of get counts or maybe even the make and model so that you can kind of figure out what the most popular model is, what the most popular county is for electric vehicles and things like that. So feel free to just kind of sort through this data whatever way that you want to. So that's how you can import a CSV file. We can also export data from our PowerShell scripts out to a CSV file. Now, I've already got some data imported here, but I'm going to show you another example where I just manually construct some objects in PowerShell. And then we're going to use the export CSV command here to simply take those input objects and export them to a file on the local file system. You can also specify what your uh, delimiter is, I think. Yep, there's the delimiter parameter right here. So if we wanted to override the comma as the default delimiter, then we could just specify that as a character right here. So what I'm going to do is actually take a sampling of our data. So let's say that I only wanted these four properties for these specific 10 records that I've grabbed right here. And then I want to just export that snapshot of this much larger CSV file into a smaller CSV file. So basically, we're just segmenting the data and limiting the number of fields that we're retrieving. So instead of piping those data records into format table, I could actually pipe it into select object and specify the properties that I want to select and filter down those fields. So once again, we're going to choose county, city, and we'll do make and model. And I'm actually going to put city before county right here, just because the city is kind of a smaller entity and a county is a much larger entity. So I'm going to start with the smallest and then kind of move up to the larger county there. 
So now we've got all the same data. It's just sorted a bit, little bit differently here where we have city on the left, then county, then make and model. And so now I can actually take this data now that I've used select object on it to only select certain properties. And I can simply pipe all of these custom objects into the export CSV command. So let's do export CSV dash path. And then we'll just say 1,000 or 138,000 dash 10. So I'm basically just saying I'm starting at record number 138,000 and I'm grabbing 10 records and we'll just append the fields like city, county, make and model dot CSV. So when we look at that file name with get child item, we can kind of clearly see which subset it is. So where's the starting record? How many records did we retrieve? And what are the fields that we retrieved in that file? So now we've crunched that 35 or 32 megabyte file down to just 440 bytes because we omitted tons of fields. We omitted many records as well. And so we've got a, a tiny snapshot of that much larger file. So now if we just do notepad on that 138,000 file right here, you can see that we've got a CSV file. Also PowerShell decided to put double quotes around each of the values as well, so that if there are spaces in the values, it just kind of treats it as a singular value. Value. So this is kind of what it looks like to take some objects and export it to CSV. Now, this is just some interesting vehicle data that I found that we can kind of play around with, but you can really just take any arbitrary object and actually send that to a CSV file as well. So for example, let's say that I run get process right here, and I've got a bunch of process information about all the different processes that are running on my system. And then let's say that I wanted to just maybe get some information about all the Chrome processes, like maybe the process ID and the process name, and then I can just send that to a CSV file. Well, what we can do is take get process and we'll just pipe it into select object here once again, because we want to limit the properties that we're going to select. Then I'll grab the ID and name, but I want to filter that down to only the processes with Chrome in the name. So back on the left hand side of select object, I'll just say where the let me do where the PS item dot name is equal to Chrome. And then we'll pipe that into select object. So now we only have the Chrome processes and we have the ID and the name. So now I can take these processes and just spit them out to a file so that in the future, I have a snapshot of the Chrome processes that were currently running on, at, on my system at the time that we took this snapshot. So once again, we'll just do export CSV dash path. And I'll just say process underscore snapshot dot CSV. And I'm also going to specify a different delimiter here. So I'll actually use a pipe character, but because a pipe character has a special meaning inside PowerShell, I'm going to surround the pipe character in a couple of quotes here so that PowerShell knows that I'm not trying to pipe into another command. All right, so now if we do get child item again, you can see we've got this process snapshot file. And if we just do notepad, process snapshot.csv, you can see that our CSV file, which is technically a pipe separated values file, is now using the pipe as its separator, but the data is other than that in the same format. So it's really useful to get you know any kind of system information or work with vehicle data, work with data that you get from some other kind of source. There's tons of different sample CSV files that you can get out there that have interesting data. Or if you just need to exchange data between different systems, CSV is one format of many that you could potentially use for that. Now, I personally prefer JSON just because JSON is ubiquitous across many different programming languages these days. But again, this is just another option that you have in your bucket in case maybe you're interacting with a vendor that you know gives you a csv file and doesn't even give you an option of getting a raw json file that you can import so anyways i just wanted to do a quick video and show you how to work with csv data from your powershell scripts thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video take care